So first and first, um, Jason, how are you and are you, how are you coping with these strange times? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm, um, they are strange times. I mean, luckily I'm in, I'm in a place of privilege. I, you know, I had a great career already. I, 15 years ago, I bought a little farm out in San Diego and, um, built a little studio in the backyard and, um, and what am I looking at? There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I built a little studio here in the backyard and we grow fruits and flowers as well as make music. So I've, I'm privileged. I, mm -hmm. I get to live the life that I created for myself that was all built on the success that I had through music. And I've continued to stay involved in music. And during this pandemic, while I'm not out touring and promoting an album, technology still allows me to promote it right and i'm i'm able to have more time working on the farm and working on new music which is exciting so i'm in a place of privilege i'm in a place where my life is really only enhanced by this um the people that work for me continue to receive a paycheck which is another place of privilege which is great um i uh, I'm working right now to create a short list of organizations that are going to benefit from the sale of this new album, mm. which is another place of privilege. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing really good. The, honestly, the hardest part, and I apologize for being really late to this interview is just keeping up with the interview request because right. there wasn't anybody today moderating the times. So every single interview I did was going over about 10 minutes. Sure. And by, by the time I got to yours, I had already cleared that <laughs> one entirely. So I skipped it and finished up the schedule and now I'm going backwards anyway. All right. Uh, no worries. No problem at all. Um, well, that's interesting what you what you started uh, talking about gratitude. So uh, it's kind of reverse order, but let's let's talk about the last uh, song on the album then, gratitude, because you mentioned all the okay. things that you're grateful for. Um, yeah. When you write a song, I... it, it's it's one of those things where you're you're grateful for both the good things that you uh, have experienced, but also the bad. So, so yeah. why is it important to, to accept both of those things in life? Uh, because that's what your life is. You know, your life is the, the culmination of all these experiences. It's the culmination of um, your thoughts and speech and beliefs and mm. outlook, um, attitude. And so even the bad shit, even if it's traumatic, you have to accept it. You have to choose it. You know, I have to choose my parents, mm -hmm. even though, you know, I came into this world and I had this situation that I had. And um, even when I'm bullied in high school, I can't go, I can't change the fact that I was bullied in high school. Mm -hmm. But if I choose it and say, you know what, it happened and it actually made me stronger. It made me want to make sure I didn't end up like those assholes. And I'm going to look for the good in these situations. So I think it's important to build on, if I'm going to have peace and happiness, I have to build on top of the sadness and whatever true foundation that I have. Right. Um, so it's important to, to recognize the bad as much as the good. And, you know, I've often been, labeled a really positive person a mm. positive songwriter but it's only because i'm miserable and depressed and i think life sucks um but i don't say that in a bad way that's just my own sort of human nature and human suffering um showing up right. um, and i then use music as my path to um, transforming those thoughts, like transmuting that energy of sadness and depression. Mm. Life sucks. For example, if we sit here and talk all day, I'll just tell you in this sort of monotone voice, 
with an unpredictable rhythm that life is this, it's that, political views, philosophical views. It's just sort of a, this sort of flat energy, unpredictable energy with bursts of communication. Yeah. But if I sing, if I sing, then suddenly it's got a thing mm. and it might even rhyme, not all the time, but it's something. And suddenly the monotony of talking gets elevated mm. and I enter into a new frequency of creativity and imagination right. and reimagining what life can be like. And then I fuse together the, the politic, I fuse together the intellect and the philosophy mm. And, um, and birds do it all day long. Birds are out there singing all day long. And what do they do? They fly. Right. right. So I use music. I, I use music as a way for me to rise above that internal sadness and pain that I feel that's mm. natural in being a human. So I think music is a really potent magical phenomenon that we humans do. Right. And, and what I find interesting about this album, then in particular with what you just mentioned, is obviously you're no stranger to reggae music, but you kind of delved into that type of music this time. So did you find new elements of kind of melodies and the way you use words and the way you uh, yeah, kind of express those ideas through, through that style? Yeah. Um, but there were, there were still quite a few songs that I wrote on say piano or guitar okay. first bef before I even brought in the the reggae groove or the okay. reggae band and the reggae production. And that that to me is a testament of a great song is mm. you can produce it in any format. You can play it as a jazz group, you can play it as a reggae group. Um, you could just strip it down and do it as an acoustic song. Like that to me is a testament of a great song. Bob Marley's songs, you can do that. He was a great songwriter, and it, it wasn't just the reggae, it was his songwriting. Uh, but then you add the reggae to it, and suddenly you've got this, this rhythm, this hypnotic marching rhythm, this, this, this groovy pocket that, that reggae has that's different than any other danceable genre. Right. But you can hear the rhythm and blues in it, you can hear the soul. Um, you can hear the Latin influences in it. Um, you can hear the African influences sure. in it. Like reggae is this really unique and beautiful kind of music. Um, and so I also was able to then perform the songs with this reggae band and occasionally mm -hmm. write right on top of that, which, which gave me a different energy. It's almost like the live energy. When I, when I play okay. live, there's a big, big band supporting you and the songs take off to a whole new level. And a lot of improvisation happens on the live stage that fills the new moment. And sure. having a giant band in the studio allowed me to then take off into a whole different atmosphere, which I usually don't have in the studio. Usually I record by myself and then we okay. produce it with a band. But this time there was about 14 of us in there and it was just cooking like a live show. Mm. And it, it was awesome. Yeah, like you said, it brings a different energy with it. And, and I suppose, um, and I think you've said this in a previous interview as well, but reggae kind of lends itself in, in a way to, um, yeah, to, to kind of, uh, even though it's very, very lighthearted sounding, it, it's, there's always very important uh, topics uh, being discussed. So how have you found that your style of writing kind of lends itself to this style of music as well? Um, well, the reggae style of music lyrically to me sings the human story, everything from mm -hmm. love songs, to understanding life and our relationship with spirit, uh, and then even life on the political level, which is about policy change and about equal rights and human rights. Mm. And those have been especially loud in reggae historically, right. largely due to the political unrest in Jamaica as reggae was really getting charged through the 1970s um, musically charged. Uh, so historically we recognize reggae as this sort of, 
a powerful political tool. Um, so I felt that what I was able to do with this record was still do the love songs that I've been doing, mm -hmm. still do the, the contemplative existential songs that I've been doing about mm -hmm. our relationship with spirit on the planet. And then also, almost for the first time in my career, is also start to sing a little bit more about those human rights issues and those policy mm -hmm. changes that are needed to truly have peace on earth as a society of humans. Sure. Um, so that's new for me. Reggae gave me that sort of a new uh, gateway, gateway mm -hmm. herb into uh, this, this, this new level of activism. Right, and then those, especially the first half of the album, then is geared towards kind of uh, looking at society where where we stand, and then kind of your views, I suppose, on or, or your philosophy on life and how we can uh, be more inclusive and kind of do this human experiment together. So yeah, um, when when you write these songs, are you in that kind of mood, like you say, because you there is a certain tra tragedy to life. So when you write these songs, is that you yourself trying to pick yourself up as well? Absolutely, first and foremost. Okay. I, it has to work for me before it can work for anything else. Mm -hmm. So if I, whether it's a tragedy on the news or just my own personal loss or suffering, I go to the instrument and I figure out how to get myself out of it or I figure out how to make sense of it so that I can heal and move on. And if it works for me, then I take it to somebody else and I take it to the stage or I take it to the studio and I start to share it to see if this is going to work for the listener as well. Mm. So yeah, it always starts internally. Um, And especially that I don't know what it's like in America at the moment because well I I can only see what happens on the news but there there seems to be still a lot of division and and anger and everything so so in a way this couldn't have come at a better time these these type of songs and for you is that kind of uh, almost discouraging or is that kind of um, hopeful to you that these songs are relevant in a way yeah. I mean, I thought they were relevant already. Sure. And I was hoping that the songs would help wake people up. But what has happened in the last couple of weeks, we have seen a huge awakening mm -hmm. in America of people finally accepting that we've had this huge racist problem, this racism problem. Um, And so there's a global shift in consciousness occurring, not just in the U.S., but all over, mm. which is a great thing. I mean, I had hoped that the songs could contribute to the awakening, but now the awakening has already begun, which mm. is amazing. Uh, so hopefully now the songs um, just continue to provide some momentum to this ongoing awakening. Um, and the, the songs will truly reflect the times rather than uh me being some outlier saying hey guys shit is fucked up <laughs> open your eyes you know now they're like yes our eyes are open shit is fucked up let us go and let's make some change right so there's uh, nothing is different other than more people are tuned in which is which I think is fantastic. Right. There's one uh, kind of song I want to go into quickly um, before kind of rounding off, which is uh, You Do You. And it's a song you did with uh, Tiffany Haddish, but kind of that message that, you, that you're sending in that it just, just to be yourself and to, to uh, like who you are and not to worry too much about what other people think. Uh, I think you said about this song that this is something that you had to remind yourself of in those darker times. So was there a kind of period in your life where you started to find your identity, so to say, or what's kind of started to find uh, mm. the, the type of person that you wanted to be? I think I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm not final. And sure, I, sure. I think I'm still, Every day I have to relearn how to do that, how to mm. accept myself. And again, music is a great way to get there because it cr it creates these lyrics and these concepts that if I sing them, I go, oh yeah, I am 
you do you, I'll do me, and together we make harmony. And so it's a reminder that it's none of my business what you think of me, as long as I think of me as a good person. Um, I, I got to still be careful with those words, because if I do that in a righteous way, then I'm not going to accept the other person, I'm, mm. and I'm not going to let them accept me. Um, so there's a, there's a finesse to language. Um, mm. But nonetheless, I wanted to create a song that was about pride, about individuality, because in these times of unrest, you see a lot of people saying that everybody just wants to be seen and heard. Like that's really where most of our pain and suffering comes from is we have an entire class of people who aren't being recognized. Sure. And they need to be seen and heard and there needs to be some real policy change and and redistribution of wealth to recognize that these people exist. Mm. Um, and uh, and to, to maybe perhaps help us get there is we need just more celebration and recognition that everybody has their own shit and we need to accept everyone and give everyone the space they need to carry their weight and to mm -hmm. carry their own shit, you know, not tell them what to do. You should do this. You should do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> like just let people be and be nice, be mindful. I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is <clears throat> mindfulness. Mindfulness is the most important thing. Awareness Mm. awareness is the most important thing because the more we are aware of ourselves the more we are aware of suffering in the world the more we are mindful that others aren't aren't being treated equally and that people are suffering then the better we're going to be as people and better we're going to be as a society and probably better we'll be as a species on earth living in harmony with the planet we're not even living in harmony with ourselves <laughs> right so we need the kind of music that gives us a reason to dance. Um, you know, when I look at these protests on TV and I see cops on one side of the street and I see, you know, rioters or, or protesters or whoever on the other side, I wonder what would happen like at a different hour if, if, if the police weren't wearing all that riot gear and the, the protester wasn't in protest mode. If say they were just at the grocery store passing sure. each other as strangers, they would probably just go about their business and just pass each other in the grocery store as strangers. But instead, they're showing up in the street, you know, and they're fighting for these stories. You know, the, the protester is fighting to be seen and recognized, and the police is fighting because they're being paid to fight by this by the government system telling them to go fight right and it's this bizarre s story all it is is a story and it's a fight for resources and power and wealth and but at, it's really just a story and without that story they're just two human beings that both have to go do their laundry and both have to go <laughs> to the grocery store and both have to go through life and i I wish we could spend more time on those stories about the basic human needs mm. that we all have to do our laundry. We all have to go to the grocery store. We all need food, water, shelter. And that, and we spend more time on those peaceful stories rather than we need to go out and fight today from nine to five. We have to put on our riot gear and go kick some ass. Like that is a terrible story. That is a terrible waste of energy. Right. So I want there to be music that can play in the laundry mats, music that can play in the grocery stores, music that can be played even at the protest to remind us to put down our weapons and just be human and be civil and be, mm. be loving and be mindful and be helpful to each other because we're only here for a short time. For we're only here sure. for eight or nine decades if we're lucky. And then what, you know, then our children have to clean up our mess you know, right. and we're doing the work that previous generations had built on. So we have to now clean up whatever they did. So I don't know that humans are ever going to learn, but if I can add music to the learning, I will. And that makes me feel good. 
I think that's a, that's a beautiful sentence to end on. Cool. All right, Jason, I want to thank you very much for taking the time. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I love, I love the, um, yeah, the message of ho not only hope, but kind of, uh, recognizing each other's, uh, common humanity and that I really like that idea and then and we can definitely use some, some more of it. So, uh, I hope everything goes well with the album. Thanks. And, uh, Me I'm going to wish you a great day. All right. Thanks All for right. the chat. No worries. Appreciate you. Thanks for your patience and uh, no problem at all. See you soon. All right. Bye bye, Jason. All right. Bye bye.